Hey there folks, Mr. G back here with another educational video. This time we are finally getting to talking about triangles. We've been doing trig now for a couple of weeks. Now we're going to be really starting to focus on some triangles. Before we start, I want to go over a couple of key rules and features that all triangles have. The first rule here is that the sum of all angles needs to be equal to 180 degrees. That's just the definition for triangles. The next one here, a bigger angle means that the opposite side needs to be larger. Let me show you that with an example here. If we have a small angle, say on our triangle on the left here, that means that the side across from it has to be small. Whereas if we have a large angle here, that means the side across from it needs to be bigger. This is true for all triangles, and the bigger the angle means the bigger the side across from it. If, for instance, this angle here is smaller, then the side across from it needs to be smaller than this side over here. So if this angle up top is smaller than this angle over here, then the side across from it in green needs to be smaller than the side over here in blue. Lastly, one side can't be bigger than the sum of the other two sides. So if we had a triangle with side length of 12, 5, and 5, and were to try and draw it, let's say we drew our one side over here, and we thought, oh, maybe I can connect these two sides with like 5 and 5. Notice, even if we were to tilt the sides fully downwards, even if we were to take these two sides and move them directly in line with our length of 12, they still wouldn't reach each other. So if one side is larger than the sum of the other two sides, they can't touch and form a triangle. Now that we've talked about that, let's see how we would do some of the stuff that you did back in grade 10. So our first example here is for solving a triangle. When it says to solve the triangle, that means we solve for all the sides and all the angles we don't have. So by the end, we should know all three angles, all three sides. In this particular question, we're given two angles, angle C and angle A, and one side, side B. Now the way that this works is the angle and the side across from it get the same letter. Uppercase means the angle, lowercase means the side. So if we wanted to draw this, let's start by drawing our angle 90 degrees. Next, we can draw our angle of 30 degrees. So let's do that. Since these are both angles, they're uppercase. Now side B, you might be wondering where that goes. Well, our last angle here needs to be angle B, and the side is across from it, so down here is our side of four millimeters. Now what you'll realize that this is a right triangle, and we can use all of the trig that you learned last year to solve it. Our first step is to figure out what angle B is here. Since we know it all adds up to 180 degrees, our angle B should be 180 minus the two angles that we already have, which means that our angle B is 60 degrees. Next, we gotta work out our other sides here. We wanna figure out what our side A and our side little c over on these two places are. Since we have all of the trig ratios, we can use any ratio we like. I'm gonna use cosine. So if I start with this angle right here of 30 degrees, and I wanna use cosine, the cosine of our angle 30 degrees is equal to our adjacent over our hypotenuse, which in our letters here is going to be b over c. Now we know what the cosine of 30 degrees is. If you remember from last time, this is one of our special angles. So this is equal to root 3 over 2. We know that b is equal to 4, and we're trying to solve for c. Once you have this, we can do a little bit of rearranging. Multiply both sides by c, multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by root 3, and then we can rationalize this to get our final answer. Finally, we need to solve for our side a in this case. For this one, I'm going to use tangent, and I'll stick with 30 degrees this time. When we're doing tangent, it's always opposite over adjacent, which in this case is A over B. 10 of 30 degrees is one of our special angles again, so we know this is exactly 1 over root 3, which will be equal to A over 4. Multiply both sides by 4 to isolate for A, and we get our answer right there. And we have solved our triangle. We started with two angles on one side, we solved for our missing angle, we solved for both of our missing sides. Before we move on to our next example, I messed up the units on this one. I've fixed them here. This is all grade 10 stuff. In grade 11, what we're going to be focusing on are triangles that aren't right triangles. But we can still use a lot of the same math to help us. To start with, we're going to be doing area problems. So finding the area of triangles. This word oblique here just means that there are no 90 degree angles inside our triangle. So our second example here is to find the area of a triangle with sides of 5 centimeters and 9 centimeters, an angle of 72 degrees between them. We're answering to two decimal places here. First thing we want to do, just like our last example, is to draw a picture. So here's a sketch of the information that we have. Now we don't know what this side here is going to be, and we don't know any of the other angles. But in this case, we actually don't need to know any of the other sides or any of the other angles. Because all we're interested in solving for is the area, which is equal to 1 half times the base 
times the height. Now the way I have it drawn here, nine centimeters would be my base. You could have also drawn it so that five centimeters on the bottom and nine centimeters was off on the angle. You'll still get the same answer. So right now, we already know what the base is, but we still don't know what the height is. The way that we would find the height and the height of a triangle in general is from our top point, we draw a line straight down until it touches our base, and this will make an angle of 90 degrees. Which means that though this triangle is not a right triangle, we can make a right triangle on the inside and use that to solve for our height. So here's a version of the triangle we're gonna be using to solve for our height. Note this side right here is not equal to nine centimeters. This whole side is, but not this smaller one. We actually don't know how long it's gonna be. In this case, we know the hypotenuse and the opposite side. So the ratio we're gonna to have to use is sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse which is h over five in this case. If we multiply both sides by five, we can solve for the height, which if we plug into our calculator, we get an answer of this many centimeters. Now I'm keeping some extra decimal places here just to make sure that we don't have any rounding errors. Now that we have our height here, we can plug it back into our area formula and get our answer, which is this right here, rounded to two decimal places. That's the end of our first video here. If you wanna try a bit of homework before watching the second one, here's what I would recommend. So try out those questions if you'd like, or watch the next video and then you can do all the homework at the same time. See you then.